I'm back on the cabin land here. And when I was in here filming for the last video, I was showing where the deer were feeding, and I mentioned how I really feel for them, the cold temperatures we get, and the snow is really deep, and how they have to fill their belly with just these little buds off of the trees. And I got to thinking, and I go, you know, I can help them out with that. I got this one spot on my road where it's a 90 degree corner, and that was a real muddy area that I built the road up. And every time I go through there, I have to hug the inside corner of that road there. And unfortunately, there's a big maple that leans right in the road. And if I'm not careful, I come really close to damaging my vehicle. So I'm gonna go in there now and I'm gonna cut that tree down. And then I'm gonna cut all the top branches so the deer can reach them. And that'll offer them a bunch of good nutritional forage and help them through the winter here. Later, I'll harvest the firewood, but uh, that'll do. I'll do that now, and uh, that'll help the deer out and make me feel good. So I'm gonna go ahead in there now and uh, get started with that. So they're working in here a lot. I mean, look at the deer trails in here. The deer are in here a lot. I really don't like to cut down any healthy maples because they're really struggling now. But this one, it's really crowding the road. It uh, leans into the road like that, so this is the one I'm going to take down. And I got a lot of deer activity right here anyway, so I'll go ahead and take this one down. The deer will hopefully feed on the tops, and then when they're done, I'll come in in the spring and harvest all the wood. Yeah. Yeah, all this tree top now, I cut it up, get it down where they can reach it. Be a buffet tonight. Yes, sir. You know, like I said, I don't like to cut healthy trees, but I've had this big maple leaning in the road, really kind of in the way, always threatens my vehicle. You know, if I'm not paying attention coming in, it's right on the corner there. I decided I'm going to go ahead and cut it and uh, the deer will make good forage from the top here. I've got a lot of really nice food for them that I just put down. I've been climbing around through all this brush, cutting it, getting it down at the level where they can eat it. I've got a nice batch of it here for them. All these little tops here, all these little buds. They should make good use of this. I'll set my trail camera up, see if I can get a few pictures of them. That'll be good. It'll make me feel good. It helps them out. And then later when they're done with it, I'll uh, harvest all the firewood. So I'm providing for them now and hopefully I'll be rewarded with some uh, good meat harvest in the fall. But if I cut this tree in the summer, it's not going to do the deer any good, you know, so I'll cut it now. And uh, that way they can get the best use of it and then I'll get my wood out of it later on. Well, working with the maze of tangled branches in the knee-deep snow was a good reminder I wasn't 20 anymore. Not that I needed one, though. <laughs> Time for coffee. This thermos here. You won't believe it, but this is the same thermos, and I mean the exact same thermos that I had in my little Batman lunchbox when I was around fourth grade. Isn't that crazy? And it still works just fine. I don't have the cap for it anymore, but it's just cool because I was like in third or fourth grade when I was drinking out of this thermos, you know? Is that wild? You know, I'll be heartbroken if it ever gets trashed or lost or something. Yeah, I treasure it, you know. I wish I still had the cover. In fact, I wish I still had the lunchbox. <laughs> so here, I'm cutting the tree for the deer here. They'll all flock in here, have some nice tender forage. They can't reach these tree tops, you know, but now they can. Got a little exercise. Enjoying it. And when I come back and I see the deer have been stripping it, it's going to make me feel great. And I like to feel great. The more things
things you do that make you feel good, the better you feel. It's just simple. I mean, it's pretty simple, don't you think? Yeah. I'm out here in the woods, and it's my woods, and I'm having a ball. Well, what I'm doing today, fellas, you're probably going to think I'm off my rocker. <laughs> Maybe I am. I'm out cutting a little bit of popple and uh, setting it up here on the dam to feed my resident beaver. I've got a beaver that moved into my marsh uh, this summer, and he built me a nice little pond. Uh, he's, uh, because of that, he's given me some really good muskrat trapping. Uh, a lot of ducks and geese coming and going right here in front of the house. Uh, so I'm uh, paying him back, giving him a little bit of a uh, nice fresh popple, which he doesn't have here on the edge of the marsh. So I'll show you what I've got going on. <laughs> Supper time! <laughs> See? He's built up some really good water here. I got my trail camera there. I put some popple out. Down over here, he's built a secondary dam. Pretty amazing animals, they really are. You know, it's just one beaver and he built that dam by himself. And look at the water he's holding back. See the, the lower to the upper. That's pretty good. Pretty amazing. They're really amazing animals. See the marsh used to just look like this. I mean, that's ugly. And the deer will filter through here like crazy. You know, when it's like this, the deer will cross this and uh, hide in here and bed down in here. But when it's full of water, they skirt the edges and you have much better deer hunting. You can funnel them a lot better. So having the beaver on the property is a plus in most cases. It's a beautiful sunrise, but man, it's all petered out now. It's getting cold. It feels like it's going to snow. See, man? The beaver's lodge is right in that pompous grass over there. And the homestead right there. Uh, the beaver's made a nice pond for me. And I've got muskrats building houses all over the place. So I'm, I'm just going to trap it for a few days, I'll pull up a batch of rats, and that'll be it. Then I'm going to leave them all alone. And uh, hopefully that beaver will find a mate and colonize and uh, have a family and establish a real good pond for me. And then I'll have some really hot muskrat trapping for a few years. And that'll be good. So I provide for him, and he's providing for me, see? There's a feed bed right there. I got another feed bed right there. I got another feed bed there. I got a feed bed there. And I got feed beds here. Crazy, huh? So uh, I'll just leave the beaver alone. There's no sense in me taking him. He's a small beaver. I don't know if I'd even get $10, maybe 15 at the tops for him. And uh, and then my pond would go away. So I leave him alone, I'll cater to him. He's providing for me. And I'm uh, pulling up a bunch of muskrat. So it's a win-win. And I like seeing the beaver here too. A lot of ducks and geese coming in. It's nice. Keep on moseying on. Another muskrat there. Here's a feed bed. Beautiful feed bed. And a rat. This feed bed looks destroyed. It's always a good sign. Oh yeah, a rat. There's another little feed bed here. You can see my cable under the water there. The muskrat underneath. This one's still set. I can see I got a muskrat. Right on the surface there. We'll go over here and check this one. You can see a rat right over there. Go. Ah, 
I'm just checking on my resident beaver here. Uh, this is early March, but the snow is still about 30 inches deep. Uh, it'll be a while before things start thawing out. But uh, when the pond was freezing over and there was still a little bit open water by the dam, I was putting some popple and the beaver would come out of the ice and get it. But then later, I never saw him. And he really didn't put in an adequate food pile. He didn't stockpile enough food, you know, beneath the ice. He's obviously an amateur. And a lot of the food he was stockpiling was outside of the ice. So I was a little concerned. I've come over to his lodge to see if uh, somebody is still inhabiting it. And I can see that something's living in it. And I'll show you how. See, he's got a breather hole here. And you see the frost crystals down in there? That's from the heat escaping the lodge, you know? So it's telling me somebody is living in the lodge. Well, something's living in there. I can't say for sure that it's the beaver. If he didn't survive, certainly a colony of muskrats would inhabit it, and that would cause enough heat that I can see weeping through the vent hole here. Um, if he didn't survive the winter, I'm certain that when the beavers get on the move in the spring, since there's a nice lodge here, another one will take his place. Without a beaver in the marsh here, it's just cattails and brush, and it's not very pretty, you know. And when there's a beaver, he makes a nice pond, and then I have waterfront property, and it's really enjoyable. I have a lot of ducks and geese coming in. It gives me a pond. I can kayak across back and forth when I'm hunting, like last fall, like you guys saw when I was paddling across with the, uh, the young buck in my kayak there. It's just a lot of fun. It's nice to have that. And uh, I, I really like having the beavers on my land because otherwise I've got just nothing but a big meadow. The way everything is laid out in nature, it's just a food chain. One animal preys off of another, which preys off of another, which preys off of another. So why should human beings be removed from that equation? It's the way God intended it. It even says so in the Bible. So I'm not a cruel person because I'm out here harvesting a few animals. I'm not in here taking them all. I'm not being greedy. I'm just taking a few in the, I had my traps out for two nights. I caught enough muskrats that'll pay for the propane consumption for my homestead for an entire year. I didn't even put a dent in the population. That's just good land management, you know? A lot of people think the trappers are all cruel and heartless people, and sure, there are some bad trappers out there, but you gotta understand that there's bad people in all walks of life. You know, just because a person owns a gun doesn't mean that he's gonna go to a school and start shooting a bunch of innocent children. Just because a guy likes to have a beer after work doesn't mean he's gonna get licked up and drive around all drunk and kill somebody, you know? So, yeah, there are some bad trappers to uh, give trapping a bad name, but there's a lot of really, really good people. I gotta tell you, the biggest animal haters I have ever met in my life are not sportsmen. They are common landowners that are having wildlife damage issues. I mean, I'm telling you, I know, I hear a lot of things from the landowners and places I trap. People light the beaver lodges on fire, or they take an excavator and destroy the lodge in the middle of the winter time, or they're killing the beavers when they have little babies, and that's something a good sportsman would never ever do. And I cringe at the thought. You know, anybody that's going to take the time to view a few of my videos before they pass judgment on me, they will realize that I have a very high respect and adoration for wildlife and wild places. I harvest a few animals because that's how I live. And I give back. I give back a lot. You know, I had some fun putting out the popple. Put it over there where the spillway is. Uh, it'd be gone in the morning. Then I'd paddle around and I'd find where he ate all the bark off of it. And then he made it a part of his lodge. And I'd find the certain sticks that I'd put out. And he was building his lodge with it. So it was kind of fun. They're a remarkable animal. You know, and uh, 
I don't, you know, I trap a lot of them, but I don't do it without a conscience. And I always keep a comfortable balance. It's just the way it should be. You gotta be a good steward of the land. You gotta take care of things. You know, God gave us this great creation and we should nurture it, not rape it. So that's all I gotta say about that. Yes, sir. I'm walking in to check the treetop. <laughs> Check this out, man. What a sight. This is great. Deer tracks, deer poop, huh? They're all in here. Feasting on the treetop. Look how much deer activity is in here. Ah, oh, that's awesome. They're all in here eating all the, all the treetops, see? Look at that. It's beautiful. Look at that. Nah. I can't tell you how good this makes me feel. You know, see? They're just cleaning it up. Sure, I could go out and buy some bales of alfalfa and put corn out and stuff like that. For one thing, it's illegal to do that here. Uh, and if you feed them corn, it's not good for them, man. And a lot of times it does them more harm than good. Uh, if they're in a cornfield and they're feeding on that for a period of time their digestive system can handle it but to all of a sudden give them all that starch when they haven't had it and they've been subsisting on just these little buds it's not good for them some people give them you know horse feed and stuff like that it does the deer more harm than good it's not good for them at all and this is just their natural forage oh, I'm thrilled yeah I'm feeling really good about this I'm glad I did it uh, the deer are really struggling right now. The snow is uh, up to their bellies. I had a deer come in my yard this morning and I filmed her. I could tell that she was smelling the uh, sunflower seeds at the bird feed and was attempting to come in for some. It's a little misleading when you see me walking around on snowshoes and I'm only sinking in about a foot, but the snow is uh, a good 30 inches plus deep right now. So uh, here, I knocked the tree down, I cut all the branches so they could reach it. They've been in here foraging just like I knew they would. It's mission accomplished. I feel great about it. And that's what life is all about. Like I said, the more things you do that make you feel great, the better your life is. It's just that simple, man. So I hope you enjoyed the video. All the best to you and God bless.